Well, good evening and uh, welcome to Soul and Bliss Theatre. And I, I'm not on a blackout, but this is a directorial kind of choice. Um, my name is Richard Kenyon and I'm the artistic director um, for Soul and Bliss and the director for tonight's show. Um, Dr. Faustus. So part of our company's mandate, I think, is to take, um, to take Shakespeare, to take Marlowe and take them off the pedestal. And I think that's the only way that we can really connect to, to Shakespeare and to Marlowe and to other Elizabethan playwrights is to meet them as an equal. Because um, I know when I was first introduced to Shakespeare, um, or maybe it was when Shakespeare was introduced to me, it really changed my life. And because I felt this immediate connection to the language, my grade 11 English teacher had successfully taken Shakespeare off the pedestal and started to demystify, to demystify him uh, for myself and my classmates. And that's been um, a very important part of the work that we've been doing uh, in the, the last 13 months in quarantine. Um, but also most importantly is we wanted to challenge both you, our audience, and ourselves, the performers, to explore these amazing playwrights and their work. And tonight we endeavor to do just that as we examine a very interesting and a fantastic play written by a contemporary of Shakespeare's, Christopher Marlowe. Um, so uh, I have included a link below uh, in the notes to a Christopher Marlowe biography online, which is just fantastic and gives you, if you're really um, curious about Marlowe, who he was and what he was doing. Um, a synopsis of the play briefly is the, the history that it's officially called the tragical history of the life and death of Dr. Faustus. Uh, commonly referred to simply as Dr. Faustus, an Elizabethan tragedy by Christopher Marlowe, based on German stories about a title character, Faust. And Faustus is a brilliant but embittered academic, a solitary scholar who has exhausted the confines of human knowledge and is frustrated with the futility of religion, law, and science, and he's desperate for a deeper understanding of the universe and for the worldwide fame that it will bring. Um, risking everything, he conjures the demon Mephistopheles and asks her to strike a deal with Lucifer. Her, we have a female playing that part tonight. Um, 24 years of absolute knowledge and infinite power in exchange for his soul. And despite being tormented by doubt, Faustus agrees to the deal and signs in blood but as he begins to revel in his new powers, the world around him starts to collapse and the clock inexorably counts down to the final moments of reckoning. Um, the play was written sometime between 1589, 1592, uh, and it may have been performed between then, between 1592 and Marlowe's death in 1593. Um, one fun little story about this is the powerful effect of very early productions of the play in the 16th century, 15th, 17th century, um, is indicated by the legends that quickly accrued around them, that uh, actual devils once appeared on the stage during a performance to the great amazement of both the actors and spectators, a sight that was said to have driven some spectators mad. Oh, the power of theater. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce uh, the, the four amazing actors that are gonna be enacting probably 20 different parts tonight, a multitude of parts each. Um, and they are. Hi, I'm Luann Morrow. I'm playing the chorus, Wagner, the Vintner, et cetera, et cetera. Hi, I'm Alana Yurik. I'm playing Valdez, Robin, the evil angel, um, and many others. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Gore. I'm playing the good angel, Cornelius, Scholar One, Lucifer, Covetousness, Sloth, Cardinal Lorraine, Raph, Emperor, Duke, and the Old Man. Hi, my name is Jordan Zabilski, and I'll be playing Mephistopheles, as well as Raph. And I'm Richard, as you know, uh, and I will be playing uh, Dr. John Faustus. So sit back, and while there's a picture of an actor in front of you 
working incredibly hard, the words are very important to listen to. So as Shakespeare wrote, on your imaginary forces work. The tragical history of Dr. Faustus, as it hath been acted by the Right Honorable the Earl of Nottingham, his servants. Written by Christopher Marlowe, London. Printed by V.S. for Thomas Bushel, 1604. Not marching now in fields of Thrasamine, where Mars did mate the Carthaginians, nor sporting in the dalliance of love in courts of kings where state is overturned, nor in the pomp of proud audacious deeds intends our muse to daunt his heavenly verse. Only this gentleman, we must perform the form of Faustus, fortunes good or bad, to patient judgments we appeal our plod and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now he is born, his parents base of stock in Germany within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Württemberg he went, whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up, so soon he profited in divinity. The fruitful plot of scholarism graced that shortly he was graced with doctor's name excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology, till swollen with cunning of self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount above his reach and melting heavens conspired his overthrow. For falling to a devilish exercise and glutted more with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon cursed necromancy Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers before his chiefest bliss. And this the man that in his study sits. Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that wilt thou profess having commenced to be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art and live and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, tis thou that hast ravished me. Bine desere est fine logias, is to dispute well. Logic's chiefest end affords this art no greater miracle. Then read no more. Thou hast attained the end. A greater subject fitteth Faustus' wit. Bid on Kai may on farewell, and Galen come. A seeing ubi destinate philosophus, ibi insipit emeticus. Be a physician, Faustus, heap up gold. Be eternized for some wondrous cure. Summum bonum medanisse sanitas. The end of physic is our body's health. Why, Faustus, hast thou not attained the end? Is not thy common talk about aphorisms? Are not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand desperate maladies have eased? Yet art thou still but Faustus and a man? Wouldst thou make man to live eternally? Or being dead, raise them to life again? Then this profession were to be esteemed, physic farewell, a where is Justinian, sin una en depque res lagatas duarbas, alta rem alta valorum re, etc. Ha, a pretty case of paltry legacies. Exerder filium non potest pater nise. Such is the subject of the institute and universal body of the church. His study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash, the devil and illiberal for me. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible, Faustus, view it well. Stipendum peccate mors est, ha, stipendum, etc. 
The reward of sin is death. That's hard. Si picasse negamas falir mor et nulla est in nobis veritas. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and there's no truth in us. Why then belike we must sin and so consequently die? Aye, we must die an everlasting death. What, what doctrine call you this? Que sera, sera. What will be, shall be. Divinity, adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, scenes, letters, and characters. Hi, these are those that Faustus most desires. Oh, what a world of profit and delight, of power, of honor, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artesian. All things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds. But his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of a man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Hear, Faustus, try thy brains to gain a deity. Wagner, commend me to my dearest friends, the German Valdes and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, sir. Their conference will be a greater help to me than all my labors plot I ne'er so fast. Oh, <laughs> go forward, Faustus, in that famous art wherein all nature's treasury is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, Lord and commander of these elements. How am I glutted with conceit of this? Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please? Resolve me of all ambiguities? Perform what desperate enterprise I will? I'll have them fly to India for gold, and ransack the ocean for orient pearl, and search all corners of the newfound world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates. I'll have them read me strange philosophy and tell the secret of all foreign kings. I'll have them wall all Germany with brass and make swift Rhine circle fair Württemberg. I'll have them fill the public schools with skill wherewith the students shall be bravely clad. I'll levy soldiers with the coin they bring and chase the Prince of Parma from our land and reign sole king of all our provinces. Yea, stranger engines for the burnt of war. That was the fiery keel at Antwerp's bridge. I'll make my servile spirits to invent. Come, German Valdes and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your sage conference. Valdes, sweet Valdes and Cornelius. Know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic and concealed arts, yet not your words only, but mine own fantasy that will receive no object for my head, but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is basest of the three, unpleasant, harsh, contemptible, and wild. It is magic, magic that hath ravished me. Then, gentle friends, aid me in this attempt, and that have with concise syllogisms graveled the pastors of the German church and made the flowering pride of Württemberg swarm to my problems as the infernal spirits on sweet Musaeus when he came to hell will be as cunning as Agrippa was whose shadows made all Europe honor him. 
Faustus, these books, thy wit, and our experience shall make all nations to us. As Indian Moors obey their Spanish lords, so shall the subjects of every element be always serviceable to us three. Like lions shall they guard us when we please. Like Almain, rutters with their horsemen's staves, or Lapland giants trotting by our sides. Sometimes like women, or unwedded maids, shadowing more beauty in their airy brows than in their white breasts of the queen of love. For Venice shall they drag huge argosies, and from America the golden fleece, that yearly stuffs up Philip's treasury, if learned Faustus will be resolute. Thou there's as resolute am I in this, as thou to live. Therefore, object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues, well-seen minerals, hath all the principles magic does require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but to be renowned and more frequented for this mystery than heretofore the Delphian oracle. The spirits tell me they can dry the sea and fetch the treasure of all foreign racks, I, all the wealth that our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, Faustus, what shall we three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Come, show me some demonstrations magical that I may conjure in some lusty grove and have these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise Bacon's and Albinus's works the Hebrew Psalter, a New Testament, and whatsoever else is requisite, we will inform thee ere our conference cease. Valdez, first let me know the words of art, and then all other ceremonies learned. Faustus may try his cunning by himself. Now, first, I'll instruct thee in the rudiments, and then wilt thou be perfecter than I. Then come and dine with me, and after meat will canvas every quiddity thereof. For ere I sleep, I'll try what I can do. And this night I'll conjure, though I die, therefore. Wonder what's become of Faustus that was wont to make our schools ring with sick provo. That shall we know, for see, here comes his boy. How now, sirrah? Where's thy master? God in heaven knows. Why, dost not thou know? Yes, I know, but that follows not. Go to, sirrah, leave your jesting, and tell us where he is. That follows not necessary by force of argument, that you, being licentious, should stand upon it. Therefore, acknowledge your error, and be attentive. Why didst thou not say thou knewest? Have you any witness on it? Yes, sir, I heard you. Ask my fellow if I be a thief. Well, you will not tell us. Yes, sir, I will tell you. Yet if you were not dunces, you would never ask me such a question. For is he, he is not corpus natural, and that is that mobile. Then wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am by nature phlegmatic, slow to wrath and prone to lechery, to love, I would say, if it were not for you to come within 40 foot of the place of execution, although I do not doubt to see you both hanged the next sessions, thus having triumphed over you, I will set my countenance like a precision and begin to speak thus. Truly, my dear brethren, my master is within at dinner with Valdez and Cornelius. As this wine, if it could speak, it would inform your worships. And so the Lord bless you, preserve you, and keep you, my dear brethren, my dear brethren. Nay, then I fear he has fallen into that damned art for which they too are infamous through the world. Were he a stranger and not allied to me? Yet should I grieve for him. But come, let us go and inform the rector, and see if he, by his grave counsel, can reclaim him. Oh, but I fear me nothing can reclaim him. Yet let us try what we can do. Enter Faustus to conjure. 
Now that the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world unto the sky and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath. Faustus, being thine incantations and try if devils will obey thy hest. Seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them within this circle is Jehovah's name. Forward and backward and agrammatized the abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens and characters of signs and erring stars by which the spirits are enforced to rise. Then fear not, Faustus, but be resolute and try the uttermost magic can perform. Sint mihe thy acarontis propitae, valet numen triplex, Jehove igne, arie, aquantante, spiritus salvete, orientus principus Beelzebub, inferne, ardentus, monarcha et demigorgon, propitas mos vos, ut apparatae et surgat Mephistopheles, quod tumoras per Jehovam quenham et consecratam aquam quam nunc spargo sinacom crucis quondonc facio et pervota nostra itspi nunc surgat Nobis dicatas Mephistopheles. Enter a devil. I charge thee to return and change thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go and return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. Oh, I see there's virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How pliant is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility, such as the force of magic and my spells. No, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate that canst command great Mephistopheles, Quindrigus Mephistopheles, fratras imagen. Now, Faustus, what wouldst thou have me do? I charge thee wait upon me whilst I live. To do whatever Faustus shall command, be it to make the moon drop from her sphere or the ocean to overwhelm the world. I am a servant to great Lucifer and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No. I came now hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, <laughs> but yet for accident. For when we hear one rack the name of God, abjure the scriptures and his savior Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore, the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the Trinity and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done and holds this principle. There is no chief, but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not him, for he confounds hell in Elysium. His ghost be with the old philosophers, but leaving these vain trifles of men's souls. Tell me, what is that Lucifer, thy lord? Archregent and commander of all spirits. Well, was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dear loved of God. Well, how comes it then that he is prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, for which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, 
conspired against our God with Lucifer and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? <laughs> Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinkst thou that I, who saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with 10,000 hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? Oh, Faustus, leave these frivolous demands which strike a terror to my fainting soul. What, is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou of Faustus' manly fortitude, and scorn those joys thou never shalt possess. Go and bear those tidings to great Lucifer, seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity. Say he surrenders up to him his soul, so he will spare him uh, 24 years, letting him live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me to give me whatsoever I shall ask, to tell me whatsoever I demand, to slay mine enemies and aid my friends and always be obedient to my will. Go and return to Lucifer and meet me in my study at midnight and then resolve me of thy master's mind. I will, Faustus. Had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him, I'll be great emperor of the world and make a bridge through the moving air to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore and make that land continent to Spain and both contributory to my crown. The emperor shall not live, but by my leave, nor any potentate of Germany. Now that I have obtained what I desire, I'll live in speculation of this art, till Mephistopheles return again. Sirrah, boy, come hither. How, boy? Swans, boy, I hope you have seen many boys with such pick a divan, says I have. Boy, quoth I? Tell me, sirrah, hast thou any comings in? I and goings out, too, you may see else. Alas, poor slave, see how poverty jesteth in his nakedness. The villain is bare and out of service, and so hungry that I know he would give his soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. How, my soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though twere blood raw? Not so, good friend, by a lady, I had need have it well roasted, and good sauce to it if I pay so dear. Well, wilt thou serve me, and I'll make thee go like a qui mihi disciplus? How, in verse? No, sirrah, in beaten silk and staves acre. <laughs> How's how, knaves acre? I, I thought that was all the land his father left him. Do ye hear? I would be sorry to rob you of your living. Sirrah, I say in Staves Acre. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, Staves Acre. Why, then, be like if I were your man, I should be full of vermin. So thou shalt, whether thou beast with me or no. But, Sirrah, leave your jesting and bind yourself presently unto me for seven years or I'll turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and they shall tear thee in pieces. Do you hear, sir? You may save that labor. They are too familiar with me already. Swoons, they are as bold with my flesh as if they had paid for my meat and drink. Well, do you hear, sirrah? Hold, take these gilders. <laughs> Gridirons, what be they? Why, French crowns. Mass, but for the name of French crowns, a man were as good have as many English counters. And what should I do with these? Why now, Sirrah, thou art an hour's warning whensoever or wheresoever the devil shall fetch thee. No, no, take, take your grid irons again. Truly, I'll none of them. Truly, but you shall. Bear witness, I gave them him. Bear witness, I gave them you again. 
Well, I will cause two devils presently to fetch them up hence away, Balliol and Belcher. Ooh, let your Balio and your Belcher come here, and I'll knock them. They were never so knocked since they were devils. Yes, say I should kill one of them. What would folks say? Do ye see yonder tall fellow in the round slop? He has killed the devil, so I should be called kill devil all the parish over. Enter two devils, and the clown runs up and down, crying. <laughs> Balio and Belcher, spirits away! What? Are they gone? Draw vengeance on them. They have vile long nails. There was a he devil and a she devil. I'll tell you how you shall know them. All he devils has horns, and all she devils have clefts and cloven feet. Well, sirrah, follow me. But do you hear? If I should serve you, would you teach me to raise up a Banios and Belchios? I will teach thee to turn thyself to anything, to a dog or a cat or a mouse or a rat or anything. How? A Christian fellow to a dog or a cat, a mouse or a rat? No, no, sir. If you turn me into anything, let it be in the likeness of a little pretty frisking flea, that I may be here and there and everywhere. Oh, I'll tickle the pretty wench's plackets. I'll be among them in the faith. Well, sirrah, come. But do you hear, Wagner? How Balio and Belcher? Oh, Lord, I pray, sir, let Banio and Belcher go sleep. Villain, call me Master Wagner, and let thy left eye be diametrically fixed upon my right heel with quasi vestiges notris infestri. God forgive me, he speaks Dutch, Faustian. Well, I'll follow him. I'll serve him. That's flat. Now, Faustus, must thou needs be damned. And canst thou not be saved? What boots it then to think of God or heaven? Oh, away with such vain fancies and despair. Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. Now, go not backward. No, Faustus, be resolute. Why waverest thou? Oh, something soundeth in mine ears. Abjure this magic. Turn to God again. I and Faust, Faustus will, will turn to God again. To God? He loves thee not. The God thou serv'st is thine own appetite, wherein is fixed with the love of Beelzebub. To him I'll build an altar and a church, and offer lukewarm blood of newborn babes. Sweet Faustus, leave that execrable art. Contrition, prayer, repentance, what of them? Oh, they are means to bring thee unto heaven. Rather illusions, fruits of lunacy, that makes men foolish that do trust the most. And sweet Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honor and wealth. Of wealth? Why, the signory of Emdom shall be mine, when Mephistopheles shall stand by me. What god can hurt these, Faustus? Thou art safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, and bring glad tidings from great Lucifer. Is not midnight? Come, Mephistopheles. Vine, vine, Mephistopheli. Now, tell, what says Lucifer thy lord? That I shall wait on Faustus whilst I live so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus had hazarded that for thee. But Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly and write a deed of gift with thine own blood, for that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I will back to hell. Oh, stay, Mephistopheles, and tell me what good will my soul do thy lord. Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason he tempts us thus? 
Solomon Miseris Socios Habuese Dolores. What have you any pain that tortures others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave and wait on thee and give thee more than thou hast wit to ask. I, Mephistopheles, I give it thee. Then stab thine arm courageously and bind thy soul that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own and then be thou as great as Lucifer. Lo, Mephistopheles, for love of thee I cut mine arm and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's, chief lord and regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from mine arm and let it be propitious for my wish. But, Faustus, thou must write it in the manner of a deed of gift. Aye, so I will, but Mephistopheles, my blood congeals and I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. What might the staying of my blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not that I may write afresh? Faustus gives to thee his soul. I there it stayed. Why shouldst thou not? Is it not thy own soul? Then write again. Faustus gives to thee his soul. Here's fire. Come, Faustus, set it on. You now. The blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately. Oh, will what I not do to obtain his soul? Consumatum est. This bill is ended, and Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. But what is this inscription on mine arm? Homo fuge. Whither should I fly? If unto God he'll throw thee down to hell, my senses are deceived. There's nothing writ. I see it plain. Here in this place is writ. Homo fuge, yet shall not Faustus fly? I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. Enter with devils giving crowns and rich apparel to Faustus and dance and then depart. Speak, Mephistopheles, what means this show? Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind with all, and to see thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? Ay, Faustus, and do greater the things than these. Then there's enough for th- a thousand souls. Here, Mephistopheles, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul, and yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, Mm -hmm. I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. And hear me read them on these conditions following. First, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Secondly, that Mephistopheles shall be his servant and his command. Thirdly, that Mephistopheles shall do for him and bring him whatsoever. Uh, Fourthly, that he shall be in his chamber or house invisible. And lastly, that he shall appear to the said John Faustus at all times, in what form or shape soever he please. I, John Faustus of Württemberg, doctor by these presents, do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister Mephistopheles. And furthermore, grant unto them that 24 years being expired. The articles above written in violate full power to fetch or carry the said John Faustus body and soul, flesh, blood, or goods into their habitation wheresoever. By me, John Faustus. Speak, Faustus. Do you deliver this as your deed? I <laughs> take it. And the devil give thee good on it. <laughs> now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. Oh, uh, first will I question with thee about hell. Tell me, where is this place that men call hell? 
under the heavens. Aye, but whereabouts? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever, hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in self-place, for where we are is hell, and where hell is must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell that is not heaven. Come, I think hell's a fable. <laughs> I think so, still, till experience change thy mind. What? Thinkest thou then that Faustus shall be damned? Aye, of necessity, for here's the scroll wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Aye, and body too, but what of that? Thinkest thou that Faustus is so fond? to imagine that after this life there is any pain? Tush, these are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned and now in hell. Hell, now in hell, and nay, and this be hell. I'll willingly be damned here. What walking, disputing, etc. but leaving off this. Let me have a wife the fairest maid in Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious and cannot live without a wife. How, a wife? I prithee, Faustus, talk not of a wife. Hey, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I will have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come. I'll fetch thee a wife in the devil's name. Enter with a devil dressed like a woman with fireworks. Tell Faustus, how dost thou like thy wife? A plague on her for a hot whore. Tut, Faustus, marriage is but a ceremonial toy. If thou lovest me, think more of it. I'll cull thee out the fairest courtesans and bring them every morning to thy bed. She whom thine eye shall like, thy heart shall have. Be she as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Saba, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Hold, take this book, peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of the circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder, and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devoutly to thyself, and men in armor shall appear to thee, ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations, that I might raise up spirits when I please. Here they are in this book. Now would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens, that I might know their motions and dispositions. Here they are too. Oh, nay, let me have one book more, and then, then I have done, wherein I might see all plants, herbs, and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. Oh, thou art deceived. Tut, I warrant thee. When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistopheles, because thou hast deprived me of those joys. Why, Faustus, thinkst thou heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, tis not half so fair as thou or any man that breathes on earth. How provest thou that? It was made for man, therefore is man more excellent. If it were made for man, t'was made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Faustus, repent yet. God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit. God cannot pity thee. Who buzzeth in mine ears? I am a spirit. Be I a devil? Yet God may pity me. My God will pity me if I repent. Aye, but Faustus shall never repent. My heart's so hardened I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith, or heaven, but fearful echoes thunders in mine ears. Faustus, thou art damned. Then swords and knives, poison, guns, 
halters and envenomed steel are laid before me to dispatch myself, and long ere this I should have slain myself, had not sweet pleasure conquered deep despair. Have not I made blind Homer sing to me of Alexander's love and Oenone's death? And hath not he that builds the wall of Thebes with ravishing sound of this melodious harp made music with my Mephistopheles? Why should I die then, or basely despair? I am resolved, Faustus, shall never repent. Come, Mephistopheles, let us dispute again and argue of divine astrology. Tell me, tell me, are there many heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe, as is the substance of the centric earth? As are the elements, such are the spheres, mutually folded in each other's orb. And Faustus all jointly move upon one axle tree, whose terminine is termed the world's wide pole. Nor are the names of Saturn, Mars, or Jupiter feigned, but are erring stars. But tell me, have they all one motion, but situ et tempore? I'll jointly move from east to west in 24 hours upon the poles of the world, but differ in their motion upon the poles of the zodiac. Hush, these slender trifles Wagner can decide. Hath Mephistopheles no greater skill? Who knows not the double motion of the planets? The first is finished in a natural day, the second thus a Saturn in 30 years, um, Jupiter in 12, Mars four, the sun, Venus and Mercury in a year, the moon in 28 days. Tush, these are freshman suppositions, but tell me, hath every sphere a dominion or intelligence in? Aye. How many heavens or spheres are there? Nine. The seven planets, the firmament, and the imperial heaven. Well, resolve me in this question. Why have we not conjunctions, oppositions, aspects, eclipses all at one time, but in some years we have more and some less? Per inequalum motum respect to totius. Well, I am answered. Tell me, who made the world? I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? I that is not against our kingdom, but this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think Faustus upon God that made the world? Remember this. I go. A cursed spirit to ugly hell, as thou hast damned, distressed Faustus' soul. Is not too late? Too late. Never too late, if Faustus can repent. If thou repent, devils shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Oh, Christ, my Savior, seek to save distressed Faustus' soul. Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There's none, but I have interest in the same. Oh, who art thou that lookst so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in hell. Oh, Faustus, they are come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee that thou dost injurest. Thou talkest of Christ, contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think of God. Think of the devil, and of his dame, too nor will I henceforth pardon me in this. And Faustus vows never to look to heaven, never to name God or to pray to him, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and make my spirits pull his churches down. Do so, and we will highly gratify thee. Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt see all that seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes. That sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to Adam the first day of his creation. Talk not of paradise nor creation, but mark this show. Talk of the devil and nothing else. Come away. 
Enter the seven deadly sins. Now, Faustus, examine them of their several names and dispositions. What art thou? The first. I am pride. I disdain to have any parents. I am like to Ovid's flea. I can creep into every corner of a wench, sometimes like a periwig. I sit upon her brow, or like a fan of feathers. I kiss her lips. Indeed, I do. What do I not? But fie, what a scent is here. I'll not speak another word, except the ground were perfumed and covered with cloth the varus. What art thou? The second. I am covetousness, begotten of an old churl in an old leathern bag. And might I have my wish, I would desire that this house and all the people in it were turned to gold, that I might lock you up in my good chest, oh, my sweet gold. What art thou? The third. I am wrath. I had neither father nor mother. I leapt out of a lion's mouth when I was scarce half an hour old, and ever since I have run up and down the world with this case of rapiers wounding myself when I had nobody to fight with all. I was born in hell, and look to it, for some of you shall be my father. What art thou? A fourth. I am envy, begotten of a chimney sweep, and an oyster wife. I cannot read and therefore wish all books were burnt. I am lean with seeing others eat. Oh, that there would come a famine through all the world that all might die and I live alone. Then thou shalt see how fat I would be. But must thou sit and I stand? Come down with a vengeance. Away, envious rascal. What art thou, the fifth? Oh, I said, I'm gluttony. My parents are all dead, and the devil a penny of death left me. But a bare pension that is 30 meals a day and 10 bevers, a small trifle to suffice nature. Oh, I come of a royal parentage. My grandfather was a gammon of bacon. And my grandmother a hogshead of claret wine. Mm. My godfathers were these, Peter Pickle Herring and Martin Martelmas Beef. Oh, but my godmother, she was a jolly gentlewoman and well-beloved in every good town and city. Her name was Mistress Marjorie Marchbeer. Now, Faustus, oh, thou hast heard all my progeny. Wilt thou build me to supper? Oh, I'll see thee hanged. Thou wilt eat up all my victuals. Then the devil choke thee. Choke thyself, glutton. What art thou, the sixth? I am sloth. I was begotten on a sunny bank, where I have lain ever since. And you have done me great injury to bring me from thence. Let me be carried thither again by gluttony and lechery. I'll not speak another word for a king's ransom. What are your mistress minx? The seventh and last. Who I say? I am one that loves an inch of raw mutton better than an L of fried stock fish. And the first letter of my name begins with lechery. Away to hell, to hell. Now, Faustus, how dost thou like this? Oh, this feeds my soul. But Faustus in hell is all manner of delight. Oh, might I see hell and return again. How happy were I then. Thou shalt, I will send for thee at midnight. In meantime, take this book, peruse it thoroughly, and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great thanks, mighty Lucifer. This will I keep as chary as my life. Farewell, Faustus, and think on the devil. Farewell, great Lucifer. Come, Mephistopheles. Learned Faustus to know the secrets of astronomy, graven in the book of Joe's high firmament, did mount himself to scale Olympus top. Being seated in a chariot burning bright, drawn by the strength of Yoki dragon's necks, he is now gone to prove cosmography. And as I guess, will first arrive at Rome, 
to see the Pope and manner of his court and take some part of Holy Peter's feast that to this day is highly solemnized. Having now, my good Mephistopheles, passed with delight the stately town of Traer, environed round with airy mountain tops, with walls of flint and deep entrenched lakes, not to be won by any conquering prince, from Paris, next coasting the realm of France, we saw the river Maine fall into Rhine whose banks are set with groves of fruitful vines, and then up to Naples and rich Campania, whose buildings fair and gorgeous to the eye, the streets straight forth and paved with finest brick, quarters the town in four equivalents. And there saw we learned Marrow's golden tomb, the way he cut an English mile in length through a rock of stone in one night's space, and from thence to Venice, Padua, and the rest in midst of which a sumptuous temple stands that threats the stars with her aspiring top. Thus hitherto hath Faustus spent his time. But tell me now, what resting place is this? Hast thou as erst as I did command, conducted me within the walls of Rome? Faustus, I have, and because we will not be unprovided, I have taken up his holiness privy chamber for our use. I hope his holiness will bid us welcome. Tut, tis no matter, man, we'll be bold with his good cheer. And now, my Faustus, that thou mayst perceive what Rome containeth to delight thee with, know that this city stands upon seven hills that underprops the groundwork of the same, over the which four stately bridges lean that make safe passage to each part of Rome. Upon the bridge called Ponto Angelo, erected is a castle passing strong, within whose walls such store of ordnance are, and double cannons framed of carved brass, as match the days within one complete year, besides the gates and high pyramids which Julius Caesar brought from Africa. Now by the kingdoms of infernal rule of Styx, Asheron, and the fiery lake of every burning phlegeton, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situation of bright, splendid Rome. Come, therefore, let's away. Nay, Faustus, stay. I know you'd fain see the Pope and take some part of Holy Peter's feast, where thou shalt see a troop of bald pate friars oh. whose human bonum is in belly cheer. <laughs> well, I am content to compass them some sport and by their folly make us merriment. And then, then charm me what I may be invisible to do, what I please unseen of any whilst I stay in Rome. So Faustus, now do what thou wilt, thou shalt not be discerned. Sound a senate, enter the Pope and the Cardinal of Lorraine to the banquet with fri friars attending. Uh, my Lord Lorraine, will she please you draw near? Fall to, and the devil choke you, and you spare. How now, who's that which spoke? Friars, look about. Here's nobody. It is like your holiness. My lord, here is a dainty dish who sent me from the Bishop of Milan. I thank you, sir. He oh, snatched no. Who, Who's that which snatched the meat from me? Will no man look? My lord, this dish was sent me from the Cardinal of Florence. You say true, I'll hate. What again? My lord, I'll drink to your grace. I'll pledge your grace. Uh, my lord, it may be some ghost newly crept out of purgatory come to beg a pardon of your holiness. Oh, it may be so. Friars, prepare a dirge to lay the fury of this ghost. Once again, my lord, fall to. <laughs> what are you crossing of yourself? Well, use that trick no more. I would advise you. Oh, oh. Well, there's the second time. Aware the third. I give you fair warning. Oh, oh. Faustus hits him a box of the ear, and they all run away. Come on, Mephistopheles, what shall we do? <laughs> <laughs> Nay, I know not. We shall be cursed with bell, book, and candle. 
cow, <laughs> bell, book, and candle, candle, book, and bell, forward and backward, the curse bounces to hell. <laughs> Anon, you shall hear a, a hog grunt, a calf bleat, and an ass bray, because it is St. Peter's holy day. Come, brethren, let us about our business with good devotion. Cursed he that stole away his holiness meat from the table, maledicta dominus. Cursed he that struck his holiness a blow on the face, maledicta dominus. Cursed he that took Friar Sandalo a blow on the pate, maledictus dominus. Cursed he that disturbeth our holy dirge, maledictus dominus. Cursed he that took away his holiness's wine, maledictus dominus, et omnes sancti. Amen. Beat the friars and flings fireworks among them. When Faustus had with pleasure tain the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, he stayed his course and so returned home where such as bear his absence, but with grief, I mean his friends and nearest companions, did gratulate his safety with kind words and in their conference of what befell, touching his journey though the world and air, they put forth questions of astrology which Faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at his wit. Now is his fame spread forth in every land. Amongst the rest, the emperor is one. Carolus V, at whose palace now Faustus is feasted amongst his noble men. What there he did in trial of his art, I leave untold. Your eyes shall see performed. Oh, this is admirable. Here I have stolen in one of Dr. Faust's conjuring books, and in faith I mean to search some circles for my own use. Now will I make all maidens in our parish dance at my pleasure, stark naked before me, and so by that means I shall see more than I e'er felt or saw yet. <laughs> Robin, pretty come away. There's a gentleman tarries to have his horse, and he would have his things rubbed and made clean. Keep such a chafing with my mistress about it, and she has sent me to look thee out. Pretty come away. Keep out, keep out, or else you are blown up. You are dismembered, Rafe. Keep out, for I am a roaring piece of work. No, come, what dost thou with that same book thou canst not read? Yes, my master and mistress shall find that I can read. He for his forehead, she for her private study. She's born to bear with me or else my art fails. What, what, Robin, what book is that? Uh, 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 what book? Oh, why the most intolerable book for conjuring that e'er was invented by any brimstone devil. So what kind of kind thou conjure with it? I can do all these things easily with it. First, I can make thee drunk with hypocrisy at any tavern in Europe for nothing. That's one of my conjuring works. Oh, Master Parson says that's nothing. True, Rafe, and more, Rafe, if thou hast any mind to nan spit our kitchen maid and then turn her and wind her to thy own use as often as thou wilt, and uh -huh. at midnight. <laughs> oh, oh, brave Robin, shall I have nan spit into mine own use? On that condition, I'll feed thy devil with horse bread as long as he lives, a free cost. <laughs> no more, sweet Rafe. Let's go and make clean our boots, which lie foul upon our hands, and then to our conjuring in the devil's name. <laughs> uh, come, Rafe, did I not I tell thee we were forever made by this Dr. Faustus book? Itchy signal. <laughs> Here's a... Here's a simple purchase for horse keepers. Our horses shall eat no hay as long as this lasts. Look, but Robin, here comes the vintner. Oh, sh I'll gull him supernaturally. Drawer, I hope all is paid. God be with you. Come, Rafe. Saw, sir, a word with you. I must yet have a goblet paid from you where you go. 
I a goblet, Rafe, I a goblet. <laughs> I scorn you, and you are but uh, etc. I a goblet, search me. I mean so, sir, with your favor. How say you now? I must say somewhat to your fellow, you, sir. Me, sir, me, sir, search your fill. Now, sir, you may be ashamed to burden honest man with a matter of truth. Well, to one of you hath this goblet about you. You lie, drawer, tis afore me. Sirrah, you, I'll teach you to impeach honest men. Stand by, for I'll scour you for a goblet. Stand aside, you had best. I charge you, in the name of Beelzebub, look to the goblet, Rafe. What mean you, sirrah? I'll tell you what I mean. Sanctoblorum uh, paraphysticion. Uh, <laughs> Nay, I'll tickle you, Vintner. Look to the goblet, Rafe. The uh, polygrampragamus, a uh, biliaborumus, a uh, frantum apacostivus tatsu mephistopheles. Enter mephistopheles. Set squibs on their backs. They run about. Oh, nominee, dominee, what means thou, Robin, thou? Hast no goblet? No, oh, peccatum peccatorum. Here's my goblet, good vintner. Uh, misericordia pro nobis. What shall I do? Good devil, forgive me now, and I'll never rob thy library more. Vanish, villains. The one like an ape, another like a bear, the third an ass for doing this enterprise. Monarch of hell, under whose black survey great potentates do kneel with awful fear, upon whose altars thousand fowls do lie. How am I vexed with these villains' charms? From Constantinople am I hither come only for pleasure of these damned slaves. How from Constantinople? You have had a great journey. Uh, will you take six pence in your purse to pay for your supper and be gone? Well, villains, for your presumption, I transform thee into an ape and thee into a dog, and so be gone. How into an ape? Well, that's brave. Well, I'll find sport with the boys. I'll go get nuts and apples now. And I must be a dog. If faith thy head will never be out of the pottage pot. Master Dr. Faustus, I've heard strange report of thy knowledge in the black art, how that none in my empire nor in the whole world can compare with thee for the rare effects of magic. They say thou hast a familiar spirit by whom thou canst accomplish what thou list. This, therefore, is my request, that thou let me see some proof of thy skill, that mine eyes may be witnesses to confirm what my ears have heard reported. And here I swear to thee, by the honor of mine imperial crown, that whatever thou doest, thou shalt be no ways prejudiced or undamaged. In faith, he looks much like a conjurer. My gracious sovereign, though I must confess myself far inferior to the report men have published, and nothing answerable to the honor of your imperial majesty. Yet for that love and duty binds me thereunto, I am content to do whatsoever your majesty shall command me. Then Dr. Faustus, mark what I say. As I was sometimes solitary set within my closet, sundry thoughts arose about the honor of mine ancestors, how they had won by prowess such exploits got such riches, subdued so many kingdoms, as we that do succeed, or that shall hereafter possess our throne, shall, I fear me, never attain to that degree of high renown and great authority, amongst which kings is Alexander the Great, chief spectacle of the world's preeminence, the bright shining of whose glorious acts lightens the world with his reflecting beams, as when I hear but motion made of him, it grieves my soul I never saw the man. If therefore thou, by cunning of thine art, canst raise this man from hollow vaults below, where lies entombed this famous conqueror, and bring with him his beauteous paramour, both in their right shapes, gesture, and attire they used to wear during their time of life, thou shalt both satisfy my just desire 
and give me cause to praise thee whilst I live. My gracious Lord, I am ready to accomplish your request. So far forth as by art and power of my spirit, I am able to perform. In faith, that's just nothing at all. But if it like your grace, it is not in my, imbili- my ability to present before your eyes the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes, which long since are consumed to dust. I am Mary, Master Doctor. Now there's a sign of grace in you, and you will confess the truth. But such spirits as can lively resemble Alexander and his paramour shall appear before your grace in that manner that they best lived in, in their most flourishing estate, which I doubt not shall sufficiently content your imperial majesty. Go to, Master Doctor. Let, Let me see them presently. Do you hear, Master Doctor? You bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor? How then, sir? In faith, that's as true as Diana turned me to a stag. No, sir, but when Akatain died, he left the horns for you. Mephistopheles, be gone. Nay, and you go to conjuring. I'll be gone. I'll meet with you anon for interrupting me so. Here they are, my gracious lord. Master Doctor, I heard this lady while she lived had a wart or mole in her neck. How shall I know whether it be so or no? Your Highness may boldly go and see. (laughs) Sure, these are no spirits, but the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes. Will it please your Highness now to send for the knight that was so pleasant with me here of late? One of you call him forth. How now, sir knight? Why, I thought thou hadst been a bachelor, but now I see thou hast a wife that not only gives thee horns, but makes thee wear them. Feel on, feel on thy head. Duh, thou damned wretch, execrable dog, bred in the concave of some monstrous rock. How darest thou thus abuse a gentleman? Villain, I say undo. What hast thou done? Oh, not so fast, sir. There's no haste but good. Are you remembered how you crossed me in my conference with the emperor? I think I have met with you for it. A good master doctor, at my entreaty, release him. He hath done penance sufficient. My gracious lord, not so much for the injury he offered me here in your presence, as to delight you with some mirth. Hath Faustus worthily requited this injurious knight, which being all I desire... I am content to release him of his horns. And Sir Knight, hereafter, speak well of scholars. Mephistopheles, transform him straight. Now, my good Lord, having done my duty, I humbly take my leave. Farewell, Master Doctor. Yet ere you go, expect from me a bounteous reward. Now, Mephistopheles, the restless course that time doth run with calm and silent foot, shortening my days and thread of vital life calls for the payment of my latest years. Therefore, sweet Mephistopheles, let us make haste to Württemberg. What, will you go on horseback or on foot? Nay, till I am past this fair and pleasant green, I'll walk on foot. I have been all this day seeking one Master Fustian. Mass, see where he is. Oh, God save you, Master Doctor. What horse courser? You were well met. Do you hear, sir? I've brought you forty dollars for your horse. I cannot sell him so. If thou likest him for fifty, take him. Uh, Alas, sir, I have no more. I pray you speak for me. I pray you let him have him. He is an honest fellow, and he has a great charge, neither wife nor child. Well, come, give me your money. My boy will deliver him to you. But I must tell you one thing before you have him. Ride him not into the water at any hand. Why, sir? Will he not drink all of, of all waters? Oh, yes, he will drink of all waters, but ride him not into the water. Ride him over the hedge or ditch or where thou wilt, but not into the water. Well, sir, and now am I made man forever. I'll not leave my horse for 40. If he had but the quality of hey, ding, ding, hey, ding, ding, I'd make a brave living on him. He has a buttock as slick as an eel. (laughs) 
Well, goodbye, sir. Your boy will deliver him me. But hark ye, sir, if my horse be sick or ill at ease, if I bring his water to you, you'll tell me what it is. Away, you villain. What does that think? I'm a horse doctor? What art thou, Faustus, but a man condemned to die? Thy fatal time doth draw to final end. Despair doth drive distrust unto my thoughts. Confound these passions with a quiet sleep. Tush! Christ did call the thief upon the cross. Then rest thee, Faustus, quiet in conceit. Alas, alas, Dr. Faustian quoth, <laughs> Master Dr. Lopez was never such a doctor, has given me a purgation, has purged me of forty dollars. I shall never see him more, but yet like an ass as I was, I would not be ruled by him, for he bade me I should ride him into no water. Now, I, thinking my horse had some rare quality that he would not have had me known of, I, like a venturous youth, rid him into the deep pond at the town's end. I was no sooner in the middle of the pond, but my horse vanished away, and I sat upon a bottle of hay, never so near drowning in my life. But I'll seek out my doctor and have my forty dollars again, or I'll make it the dearest horse. Oh, yonder is his snipper snapper, do you hear? Hey, you, hey, pass, where's your master? Why, sir, what would you? You cannot speak with him. But I will speak with him. Why, he's fast asleep. Come some other time. I'll speak with him now, or I'll break his glass windows about his ears. I tell thee, he has not slept this eight nights. And he have not slept this eight weeks. I'll speak with him. See where he is fast asleep. Ay, this is he. God save ye, Master, Doctor, Master, Doctor, Master, Doctor, Fusty, and forty dollars, forty dollars for a bottle of hay. Why, thou seest he hears thee not. Oh, ho, oh, oh. so, oh, ho, oh. ho. No, will you not wake? I'll make you wake ere I go. Alas, I am undone. What shall I do? Oh, my leg. My leg, help. Mephistopheles, call the officers. My leg, my leg. Come, villain, to the constable. Lord, sir, let me go, and I'll give you forty dollars more. Where be they? I have none about me. Come to my host here, and I'll give them to you. Be gone quickly. Oh, has he gone? Farewell, he. Faustus has his leg again, and a horse courser, I take it, a bottle of hay for his labor. Well, this trick shall cost him forty dollars more. How now, Wagner? What's the news with thee? Sir, the Duke of Van Holt doth earnestly entreat your company. The Duke of Van Holt? An honorable gentleman to whom I must be no miser of my cunning. Come, Mephistopheles, let's away to him. Believe me, Master Doctor, this merriment has much pleased me. My gracious Lord, I am glad it contents you so well, but it may be, Madam, you take no delight in this. I've heard that great belied women do long for some dainties or other. What is it, Madam? Tell me and you shall have it. Thanks, good Master Doctor. And for I see your courteous intent to pleasure me, I will not hide from you the thing my heart desires. And were it now summer, as it is January in the dead time of the winter, I would desire no better meat than a dish of ripe grapes. Alas, madam, that's nothing. Mephistopheles be gone. Were it a greater thing than this, so it would content you, you should have it here they, well, here they be, madam. Will it please you taste on them? Uh, believe me, Master Doctor, this makes me wonder above the rest that being in the dead time of winter and in the month of January, how you should come by these grapes. If it like your grace, the year is divided into two circles over the whole world, and when it is here winter with us, in the contrary circle it is summer with them, as in India, Saba, and farther counties in the east, and by means of a swift spirit that I have, I had them brought hither, as you see. How do you like them, madam? 
be they good? Believe me, Master Doctor, they be the best grapes that I ever tasted in my life before. I am glad they content you so, madam. Come, madam, let us in. You must well reward this learned man for the great kindness he has showed you. Oh, and so I will, my lord, and whilst I live, rest beholding for this courtesy. I humbly thank your grace. Oh, come, Master Doctor, follow us and receive your reward. I think my master means to die shortly, for he hath given to me all his goods. And yet methinks if that death were near, he would not banquet and carouse and swill amongst the students, as even now he doth, who are at supper with such belly cheer as Wagner e'er ne'er beheld in all his life. See, where they come, be like the feast is ended. Master Dr. Faustus, since our conference about fair ladies, which was the beautifulest in the, all the world? We have determined with ourselves that Helen of Greece was the admiral of this lady that ever lived. Therefore, Master Doctor, if you will do us that favor as to let us see that peerless dame of Greece, whom all the world admires for majesty, we should think ourselves much beholding unto you. Gentlemen, for that I know your friendship is unfeigned and Faustus' custom is not to deny the just requests of those that wish him well, you shall behold that peerless dame of Greece. No other ways for pomp and majesty than when Sir Paris crossed the seas with her and brought the spoils to rich Dardinia. Be silent then, for danger is in words. Music sounds in Helen passes over the stage. Too simple is my wit to tell her praise, whom all the world admires majesty. No marvel though the angry Greeks pursued with ten years war the rape of such a queen whose heavenly beauty passeth all compare. Since we have seen the pride of nature's works and only paragon of excellence, let us depart and for this glorious deed, happy and blessed be Faustus evermore. Gentlemen, farewell. The same I wish to you. Ah, uh, Dr. Faustus, that I might prevail to guide thy steps unto the way of life, by which sweet path thou mayst attain the goal that shall conduct thee to celestial rest. Break heart, drop blood, and mingle it with tears, tears falling from repentant heaviness of thy most vile and loathsome filthiness, the stench whereof corrupts the inward soul with such flagitious crimes of heinous sins, as no commiseration may expel, but mercy, Faustus, of thy saviour sweet, whose blood alone must wash away thy guilt. Where art thou, Faustus? Wretch, what hast thou done? Damned art thou, Faustus, damned, despair and die. Hell calls for right, and with a roaring voice says, Faustus, come, thine hour is come, and Faustus will come to do thee right. Ah, uh, stay, good Faustus, that th stay thy desperate steps. I see an angel hovers over thy head, and with a vial full of precious grace, offers to pour the same into thy soul, then call for mercy and avoid despair. Ah, uh, my sweet friend, I feel thy words to comfort my distressed soul. Leave me a while to ponder on my sins. I go, sweet Faustus, but with heavy cheer, fearing the ruin of thy hopeless soul. Accursed Faustus, where is mercy now? I do repent, and yet I do despair. Hell strives with grace for conquest in my breast. What shall I do to shun the snares of death? Thou traitor, Faustus, I arrest thy soul for disobedience to my sovereign lord. Revolt, or I'll in piecemeal tear thy flesh. We, Mephistopheles, entreat thy lord to pardon my unjust presumption, and with my blood again I will confirm my former vow I made to Lucifer. Do it then quickly with unfeigned heart, lest greater danger do attend thy drift. Torment, sweet friend, that base and crooked age that durst dissuade me from thy Lucifer with the greatest torments that all our hell affords. His faith is great. 
I cannot touch his soul, but what I may afflict his body with, I will attempt, which is but little worth. One thing, good servant, let me crave of thee to glut the longing of my heart's desires, that I might have unto my paramour that heavenly Helen, which I saw of late, whose sweet embracings may extinguish clean these thoughts that do dissuade me from my vow and keep mine oath I made to Lucifer. Faustus, this, or what else thou shalt desire, shall be performed in twinkling of an eye. Enter Helen. Was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burned the topless towers of Ilium? Sweet Helen, make me immortal with a kiss. Her lips suck forth my soul, see where it flies. Come, Helen, come, Give me my soul again. Here will I dwell, for heaven be in these lips. And all is dross that is not Helena. I will be Paris, and for love of thee, instead of Troy, shall Württemberg be sacked. And I will combat with weak Menelaus, and wear thy colors on my plumed crest. Yea, I will wound Achilles in the heel, and then return to Helen for a kiss. Oh, thou art fairer than the evening air, clad in the beauty of a thousand stars. Brighter art thou than flaming Jupiter, when he appeared to hapless Semele, more lovely than the monarch of the sky in wanton Arethusa's az azured arms, and none but thou shalt be my paramour. Accursed house, this miserable man! that from thy soul excludes the grace of heaven and flies the throne of his tribunal seat. Satan begins to sift me with his pride, as in this furnace God shall try my faith, my faith, vile hell, shall triumph over thee, ambitious fiend. See how the heavens smile at your repulse and laughs your state to scorn. Hence hell, for hence I fly unto my God. Ah. Gentlemen. What ails Faustus? Ah, my sweet chamber fellow. Had I lived with thee, then had I lived still, but now I die eternally. Look, comes he not? Comes he not? What means Faustus? Belike he is grown into some sickness by being ever solitary. If it be so, we'll have physicians to cure him. Tis but a surfeit, never fear, man. Surfeit of deadly sin that hath damned both body and soul. Yet, Faustus, look up to heaven. Remember, God's mercies are infinite. But Faustus' offense can ne'er be pardoned. The serpent that tempted Eve may be saved, but not Faustus. Oh, gentlemen, hear me with patience, and tremble not at my speeches, though my heart pants and quivers to remember that I have been a student here these thirty years. Oh, you would, I had never seen Württemberg, never read book, and what wonders I have done, all Germany can witness, he, all the world, for which Faustus hath lost both Germany and the world. Yea, heaven itself, heaven, the seat of God, the throne of the blessed, the kingdom of joy, must remain in hell forever. Hell, oh, hell forever. Oh, sweet friends, what shall become of Faustus being in hell forever? Yet, Faustus, call on God. On God whom Faustus had abjured? On God whom Faustus had blasphemed? Ah, oh, my God, I would weep. But the devil draws in my tears, gush forth blood instead of tears, in life and soul. Oh, he stays my tongue. I would lift up my hands, but see, they hold them. They hold them. Who, Faustus? Lucifer and Mephistopheles. Ah, gentlemen, I gave them my soul for my cunning. Oh, God forbid. I forbid it indeed, but Faustus hath done it for vain pleasure of 24 years. Hath Faustus lost eternal joy and felicity? I writ them a bill with mine own blood. The date is expired. The time will come and he will fetch me. Why did not Faustus tell us of this before, that the vines might have prayed for thee? Oft have I thought to have done so, but the devil threatened to tear me in pieces if I named God, to fetch both body and soul if I once gave ear to divinity. And now, tis too late. Gentlemen, away, lest you perish with me. 
What shall we do to Faustus? Talk not of me, but save yourselves and depart. God will strengthen me. I will stay with Faustus. Tempt not God, sweet friend, but let us into the next room and there pray for him. Pray for me. Pray for me. I will want noise so ever you hear. Come not unto me, for nothing can rescue me. Pray thou, and we will pray that God may have mercy on thee. Gentlemen, farewell. If I live till morning, I'll visit you. If not, Faustus is gone to hell. Faustus, farewell. Faustus, farewell. Faustus, farewell. The clock strikes 11. Oh, Faustus. Now hast thou but one bare hour to live, and then thou must be damned perpetually. Stand still, you ever-moving spheres of heaven. The time may cease and midnight never come. Fair nature's eyes rise, rise again and make perpetual day, or let this hour be but a year, a month, a week, a natural day, that Faustus may repent and save his soul. O lente, lente curiatae noctus eque. The stars move still. Time runs. The clock will strike. The devil will come, and Faustus must be damned. Oh, I'll leap up to my God. Who pulls me down? See, see where Christ's blood streams in the firmament. One drop would save my soul. Half a drop. Oh, my Christ. I rend not my heart for naming for my Christ. Yet will I call on him. Oh, spare me, Lucifer. Where is it now? It is gone. See where God stretcheth out his arm and bends his ireful brows. Mountains and hills come, come and fall on me and hide me from the heavy wrath of God. No, no, then will I headlong run to the earth. Earth, gape. Oh, no, it will not harbor me. You stars that reigned at my nativity, whose influence hath allotted death and hell, now draw up Faustus like a foggy mist into the entrails of yon laboring cloud, that when you vomit forth into the air, my limbs may issue from your smoky mouths, so that my soul may but ascend to heaven. The watch strikes. Ah, half the hour is past. It will all be past anon, O oh God. If thou wilt not have mercy on my soul, yet for Christ's sake, whose blood hath ransomed me, impose some end to my incessant pain. Let Faustus live in hell a thousand years, a hundred thousand, and at last be saved. Oh no, and is limited to damned souls. Why wert thou not a creature wanting soul? Or why is this immortal that thou hast? I, Pythagoras, metamopsychosis were that true this soul should fly from me and i be changed unto some brutish beast all oh, beasts are happy for when they die their souls are soon dissolved in elements but mine must live still to be plagued in hell cursed be the parents that engendered me no faustus curse thyself curse lucifer that hath deprived thee of the joys of heaven the clock striketh twelve. Oh, it strikes. It strikes now. Body turn to air, or Lucifer will bear thee quick to hell. Thunder and lightning. Oh, soul be changed into little water drops and fall into the ocean. Never be found. My God, my God, look not so fierce on me. Enter <coughs> devils. Ashes and serpents. Let me breathe a while. Ugly hell, gape not. Come not, Lucifer. I'll burn my books, ah, oh, Mephistopheles! Cut is the branch that might have grown full straight and burned as Apollo's laurel bough that sometimes grew within this learned man. Faustus is gone. Regard his hellish fall, whose fiendful fortune may exhort the wise only to wonder at unlawful things whose deepness doth entice such forward wits to practice more than heavenly power permits. Yeah.
Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for watching and for supporting us. And and if you like this, there's lots of other uh, other productions that we've done that are all down. I guess they'd be down down below. Um, but thank you, thank you, guys. Great stuff. And we will uh, we will see you very very soon. Thank you. Good night. Bye.